In this presentation, we will review the product opcreport.net, one of 12 product features of the full opcsystems.net suite. opcreport.net is used to automatically and manually generate reports for Acrobat Reader, Web HTML, Word, Excel, Text, and also to printers. You can use data from any database from SQL Server, Oracle, or Access that is in an open format easy to query. This would include any database logged with the product features opcdatabase.net and opcalarm.net. You can create reports based upon event from a tag that could be coming from a PLC through an OPC item, through a calculation, or even from an OPC client. You can execute a report at a specific time of day or even continuously at a specified interval. You can manually query reports as well and specify your own date range. All product features of opcreport.net can be modified during runtime. You can also programmatically change report executions through from your own Visual Studio application. You can install the Report View application on multiple client computers. Each licensed OPC system service will automatically generate reports from any number of data sources. The first step in using the opcreport.net product is to define the template for the reports that you want to create. We do that with the Report Designer found under the program group opcsystems.net. Select File New to create a new list of report templates you want to create. To create a new report to this file, we select File, Add New Report. We'll then use the Build Connection String icon. Under the Provider tab, select the database provider that you would like to use. In this example, we're going to use SQL Server. Click Next. Under the Connection tab, select the database engine that you'd like to connect this report to. You can either use SQL Server authentication or in this example we're going to use Windows authentication. Select the database in the SQL Server engine that you'd like to report from. I'm going to choose a database called OPC Test that was generated in the OPC database training video. We'll then select Test Connection and if the connection is valid you'll see this dialog that says test connection succeeded. We're now ready to select OK. Under the data source you can manually specify your own SQL select statement or the easier selection is to select the tables object and browse for the table that you would like to replay the data specifically from. Select Next. You can then add all of the fields using this selection or you can individually select one field at a time to the detail window. If you would like to group the data based upon a lot number or batch number, you can drag the field name to the groups object. Select Next. You can then choose a default design template, but we can modify this later. Go ahead and specify the name for your report and then select the option to modify the report's design. Select Finish and this is what the report looks like in the template view. We can then save this report by selecting File, Save and save all reports into a specific XML file. We're now ready to execute the report. Let's do that first with the Report Viewer which is a way to manually view the reports. From the opcsystems.net program group, select Report Viewer. Use the Browse button to the right to browse for that XML file we just saved. Use the pull down to select your desired report from that XML file. You can then specify a date range of data that you're interested in. Select View Report to preview what the report would be, look like. The view of the report data does appear and we see that we have all detailed data. 
you can use the zoom in tool to select an area of the trend that you'd like to zoom in on. Here we can see we have the date and time, we have the ramp values, random value, and sign value. You can also save this report to a specific file. We can specify the file type to be a PDF file for an Acrobat Reader file type. Enter a specific file name and then click Save. It will then generate this report which we can then view. Let's see what that report looks like as an Acrobat Reader file. We'll use Windows Explorer to browse for the file. And there is our test Acrobat Reader file. When you double click on the file, Acrobat Reader automatically opens it. Now let's see how to change the report template. If we go back to the report designer, here we have the report heading. We can change that to any text we would like. In the lower left we have the properties for that label. So any item that you select the properties window will be associated with the selected item. We can change the font of the header just by selecting it and specifying the new properties that we would like. Under the page header this is the header that it will appear at the top of each individual page. This can also include pictures and other items that you would like. In the detail window is where we have currently the data being defined. Here we have the ramp field, the random field, and the sign field. If we select the ramp field, we can see that the text property is defined to the field name of the data source. If we select the text property, there's a pull down to the right of the field and there we can change the field to a different field name or use the script editor to define our own equation of multiple fields and math equations that we would like to do. In the VB script editor we have the fields on the left to select report fields or script functions. In this example I'm going to choose a script function of AVG for average. You can see we can also do min, max, standard deviation, sum. These are all different functions that you can use on a field. Then if we simply type in the field name inside of the average script and select OK, now instead of displaying the detail of each individual record, we'll now display the average of the ramp signal for the query range of the time that we specify. We'll do the same thing for random, but in this example we'll use the function min to return the minimum value and for the sign we'll use max next we'll move these fields into the page editor We'll also move the date and time up into the summary report, set the text property to be min, date time, we'll copy and paste that field, put that into the header, and then we'll also specify a max date time. So the first field will display the lowest date and time from the record set returned and the max field will return the largest date and time for the record set returned. We'll then delete the date and time text from the page header and specify for the entire page click in the gray area below the footer window or anywhere off of the report 
design to set the max pages property to one so that we only show one page when the report is automatically generated. We'll then save those changes to the XML file, then go back to the report viewer and rebrowse for that XML file and that report that we want to execute. and select view report and this time we will only have one page displayed but it will be the statistics of average min and max for the report there we can see the minimum date and time is April 23rd at 10:36 and the maximum date and time is April 24th at 7.22 a.m. The average for the ramp is 49.47, where the minimum value for random is zero and the maximum value for sign is 0.999. Now let's see how to execute this report automatically based upon an event. From the program group opcsystems.net, select Configure OPC Systems. Then select Configure Reports. Select the service that you'd like to configure. In this example, we're going to select the local service. Next, we'll enter a report name of test. We'll browse for the XML file. Use the pull down selection to select the report within the XML file. Notice that you can have multiple reports in each XML file. With the output type, we'll again select the PDF format. For the output path, we'll specify a drive and directory and file name. You can also have an OPC systems.net tag automatically determine the file name. We're going to leave the default option to append the date onto the output path so that the file will have the year, month, and day appended to the end of the file name. You can also optionally specify the hour and the minute of when the file was generated. Under the execution type, we're going to choose event tag, but you can also choose continuous, hourly, daily, or monthly. If you choose hourly, daily, or monthly, the execution will occur at the top of the hour, top of the day, or top of the week or month. When you choose event tag, a browse button appears for you to select a tag and value. When it transitions from false to true, it will execute the report. We will use the pump value signal. Under the filter selection, we can optionally specify a query range of previous hour, current hour, previous day, current day. And this way, if you're executing a report once an hour or once a day, you can automatically set the date range that the report information comes from. You can optionally specify to email the report to a particular email account each time it's executed. Use the Add button to the lower left to then add that report execution to the report list in the middle. You can have as many different report executions in a service that you would like, each one pointing to its own XML file or to a common, common XML file with multiple reports. We will then use the example application to turn the pump on. If you go to the program group opcsystems.net and then example, we can select menu symbols and the pump in the middle, if we select off and then back on, the report will now be generated when, it, when that pump transitions from false to true. We can then browse our local system for that file. Under the G drive, we now have a file which is test with the year, month, and day appended to it. If we double click on that file, the report will appear.